Here is your latest African news. Africa wide. African sacred masks sold for 4.2 million euros in France despite protests. A carved mask from Central Africa dating from the 19th century has been sold in France for $4.6 million despite Gabonese protesters in the auction house calling for the item's restitution. The rare wooden gill mask was used in ceremonies by the Fang ethnic people of Gabon. The distinctive shape of the Ngil mask is believed to have played a huge influence on the work of famous European artists including Picasso and Modigliani. Like many others in the African community, the Gabonese are demanding the return of precious artifacts stolen during colonial times. Accompanied by security guards, the demonstrators left the auction hall calmly but continued their protest against the sale of African works of art. The auction also included a Congolese chair which sold for 45,000 US dollars. With added cost and fees, the total paid by the successful bidder for the Fang mask was 5.25 million euros, close to a record for such an item. In 2006, a similar Fang mask brought in 5.9 million euros at a Paris auction. Estimates suggest that 80 to 90 percent of Africa's cultural heritage is currently held outside the continent. Ivory Coast Ivory Coast walls up forests to fend off encroaching city. Ivory Coast is building a barrier around a primary forest in the center of Abidjan. A signed up block fence 10 kilometers long is to run along the edge of the Banco National Park to prevent it from being swallowed up by the neighboring districts. Along with the Tijuca Park in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro, the nature reserve is one of just two virgin forests worldwide to have survived at the heart of a metropolis. The nature reserve of 8,584 acres is home to around 30 flora species in danger of extinction in West Africa. In the last six years, a demographic explosion and a boom in haphazard construction have pecked away at the forest edges. The forest has had increased incidences of deforestation, pollution and fires. Ivory Coast has lost up to 80% of its natural forest in just 50 years due to agriculture, bushfires, illegal forest exploitation and artisanal mining, the International Union for Conservation of Nature says. Of the 3 million hectares of forest the country has left, 2 million have been designated as 14 separate nature reserves. Mali West Africa bloc maintains sanctions against Mali. West Africa's regional bloc has said it would maintain sanctions on Mali over the military leaders of the Sahel country, delaying a return to civilian rule after a coup. At the end of a summit in Ghana, the Economic Community of West Africa states also issued warnings to the military government that recently seized power in Guinea and Burkina Faso. ECOWAS said military leaders in Guinea should provide an acceptable timeline for transition by the end of April or it would slap punitive measures on the government and the National Transition Council, CNT. The blog added in a statement that if Burkina Faso's military did not free former President Rock Mark Christian Kabore from house arrest soon, individual sanctions would also ensue. The talks in the Ghanaian capital Accra came three months after the bloc slapped tough sanctions on Mali. Africa-wide, ILO elects first African Gilbert Hungbo as its Director General. The governing body of the International Labour Organization has announced the new Director General of the organization. Gilbert F. Hungbo from Togo was elected as the 11th Director General and will take office in October this year. The organization was founded in 1919 and has the mandate to promote decent work for all. It has 187 member states. Hongbo is currently president of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD. African Union Commission Chairperson Musa Faki has congratulated Hongbo for his new role. Nigeria in South Africa Nigeria and South Africa hold dialogue to strengthen ties. Nigeria and South Africa will on 31st March hold an inaugural dialogue in order to strengthen relations between the two countries. 
The High Commissioner to South Africa, Mohamed Manta, has said the inaugural people-to-people -people dialogue would be a stepping stone towards sincere conversations for improved relations between both nations. The envoy in a statement stated that the South African-Nigeria Social Cohesion Dialogue to be held in Pretoria would be a takeoff point for people to understand the historical dynamics of the two countries to engage and enlighten each other. The forum, with the theme Include, Engage and Enlighten, would also help in dispelling perceptions that have affected the relationship between both countries, the envoy said. Beyond this inaugural dialogue, there are plans in the pipeline to engage and interpret bilateral relations through music, movie and drama, among other artistic expressions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. Great news! You can now buy our African children's book, Maua and the Gardens of Plenty, a book that teaches children the power of great ideas. This book is the best way to start exposing your children to African stories told by Africans. Find the purchase link in the description below. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member, Patreon or donor and remember, Africa is watching.